Despite being one of the most iconic video game characters of all time, Solid Snake doesn't really get that much appreciation as an actual character. Not only is he frequently mixed up with his own father, Big Boss, but insofar as people do know that they're separate characters, they talk about how Big Boss is so much deeper and more interesting. Even Hideo Kojima, the creator of the Metal Gear series, says that he prefers writing Big Boss over Solid Snake because of how much more human the former is. It doesn't help that the most outspoken Solid Snake fans seem to only like him as a badass, hypermasculine, empty vessel to inhabit while playing, hence why they threw a temper tantrum when they were forced to play as the more androgynous and dorky Raiden for most of Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty. It's telling that these complaints largely evaporated with Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater, even though you technically didn't play as Solid Snake in that game either. If you look at the way people talk about Solid Snake, you would think that the most interesting thing about his character is that he speaks six languages and dyes his hair. But uh, really, guys, he doesn't. Stop saying that he does. And honestly, that's a shame, because to me, Solid Snake is the greatest character in all of gaming. And for this video, I'd like to explain why. When people talk about the characters of Solid Snake and Big Boss, they usually talk about how the latter is more human, because of the way he expresses emotions more openly, and is generally more personable. Well? Don't suppose you could let me out of here? Huh? I can't do that. Hurry, right, get me out of here. Hey, let me go, that hurts. Hurry up! Is that how you ask a guy a favor? This is often attributed to Solid Snake being a clone, not an organically created human being. And while that may be part of it, it's a pretty shallow reading of the character. I mean, the Liquid and Solidus are also clones, but I've never seen anyone accuse them of being emotionless. So that's why you're so obsessed with Big Boss. Some warped kind of love. Love? It's hate! A much more interesting reason for Solid Snake's comparative lack of emotional expression is his trauma. Although Solid Snake had already appeared in two games, most people were introduced to the character in the original Metal Gear Solid, where he's already a broken man. Other people just complicate my life. I don't like to get involved. You're a sad, lonely man. Many assume that this is just who he is. Over time, however, we're filled in on his history. Snake went for a lot of shit in the MSX games. On top of his commanding officer betraying him at the end of the first game, the sequel has almost every one of his allies returned to betray him. This includes his best friend, Frank Yeager, aka Grey Fox. I first met him on the battlefield. He was being held a prisoner of Outer Heaven. I was still green, and he showed me the ropes. The next time I saw him on the battlefield, we were enemies. But it was nothing personal, we were just professionals on opposite sides, that's all. And you still call yourself friends? Hard to believe. War is no reason to end a friendship. Fox hates war, but he feels that the battlefield is the only place where he belongs. This is why he joined up with Big Boss, who wants to plunge the world into a never-ending cycle of war, so that soldiers will always have a place. To Big Boss, once a soldier, always a soldier. According to him, there's no place in normal society for retired soldiers. Once you've tasted the thrill of battle, you're fated to die like a dog on the battlefield. This is the fate, the curse, that Big Boss, Snake's own father, inflicted on his son. And you were able to kill him, knowing that? Yep. How? Wanted it. 
Besides, some people just need killing. That's patricide. Yep. That's the drama that Mantis was talking about. The one we share in common. In psychology, one potential symptom of post-traumatic stress disorder is emotional numbness, a coping mechanism where a person shields their sensitivities through detaching themselves from their feelings. To quote the article, feeling emotionally numb can happen as a result of physical or emotional pain. In an attempt to protect yourself from being hurt again, it's not uncommon to disconnect, detach, or numb out feelings related to the situation. When this happens, you may feel a temporary relief that allows you to move on. Over time, though, this protective shield can begin to get in the way of connecting with others, and getting in touch with feelings that are both positive and negative. But deep within that shell, something human survives. A fragile, scarred heart. Without a shell to protect it, it's like the yolk of an egg. So Solid Snake's comparative lack of emotional expression isn't because he lacks humanity, it's because of his humanity. I don't need a handkerchief. Why? I don't have any more tears to shed. <gasps> the events of the Outer Heaven and Zanzibar Land incidents had taken their toll on Solid Snake. He had to get away from it all, find some peace and quiet. Is that why you left Foxhound? Let's just say that I needed to be alone for a while, and Alaska was the perfect place. During his self-isolation in Alaska, Snake even turned to drinking. But despite his best efforts, Snake's past traumas would continue to haunt him, as he's dragged out of retirement and thrown into battle once more. You're a natural-born soldier. You're not the grow old gracefully type. It's the same for all of us who've seen real action. The only place we can feel truly alive is on the battlefield. I'm a soldier too. I know those feelings of powerlessness, frustration that you feel every day. You've tried to play the Boy Scout out there in Alaska, but you can't race dogs in the snow forever. Why don't you come back to us and be a soldier again? You think my life is some kind of a joke? Snake, I just want to give you back your purpose in life. By the time of the Shadow Moses incident, Snake is just going through the motions, biding his time until he can finally die. But Snake, you're a hero, aren't you? I'm just a man who's good at what he does, killing. There's no winning or losing for a mercenary. The only winners in war are the people. That's right, and you fight for the people. I've never fought for anyone but myself. I've got no purpose in life, no ultimate goal. Is there anyone you like? I've never been interested in anyone else's life. So you are all alone. Just like Mantis said. But over the course of the game, Snake is shaken out of his nihilism. He begins to form new connections, and starts to care about other people again. Snake, please save yourself. Go on living and don't give up on people. One example of this is his friendship with Hal Emmerich, aka Otacon. I always work alone. Alone? Are you an otaku too? Right after Steak is reunited with his old best friend, Grey Fox, now a mad cybernetic monstrosity, he meets the man who would become his new best friend. Call me Otakon. Otakon? It stands for Otaku Convention. An otaku's a guy like me who likes Japanimation. Otacon is haunted by his family's dark history with nuclear weapons, and is horrified to learn that he accidentally continued it. Three generations of Emmerich men. We must have the curse of nuclear weapons written into our DNA. I used to think that I could use science to help mankind, but the one that wound up getting used was me. Using science to help mankind? It's just in the movies. <laughs> At first, it seems like Snake and Otacon are like oil and water. Snake shakes him around and basically calls him a pussy for not wanting to fight. First you have to get me out of here. Come on, I'm trying my best. 
That guard's got the key. You'll have to take him out. Give me a break. I'm no soldier. I can't take anybody out. You have to. I'll be killed. But over time, Snake grows more friendly towards Zonicon, and begins to value his non-combat skills. I have a favor to ask. Uh-oh. Don't worry, it'll be easy. Um, uh, I told you before I don't want to hurt anyone. I don't want you to either. In the end, Zonicon grows to overcome his fears and regrets, and becomes a hero in his own way. I'm through regretting the past. Life isn't all about loss, you know. Snake, I'm a complete person now. I've found a reason to live. Where's Otakon? He's... He's... Fighting right now. With his old self. To be the man he wants to be. This parallels Snake himself, who is forced to confront his inner demons. There definitely is a resemblance, don't you think, little brother? Or should I say, big brother? I'm not sure. Anyway, it doesn't matter. You and I are both the last surviving sons of Big Boss. On top of his theatrical personality, what makes Liquid Snake such a great villain is that he's a dark reflection of our protagonist. Listen, Meryl. Everybody feels sick the first time they kill someone. Unfortunately, killing is one of those things that gets easier the more you do it. In a war, all of mankind's worst emotions, worst traits come out. It's easy to forget what a sin is in the middle of a battlefield. Snake is speaking from experience. So why are you here then? Why do you continue to follow your orders while your superiors betray you? Why did you come here? Well... I'll tell you then. You enjoy the killing. That's why. What? Are you denying it? Haven't you already killed most of my comrades? That was... <laughs> I watched your face when you did it. It was filled with the joy of battle. Deep down, there's a dark part in Solid Snake's heart that would actually want the world that Big Boss envisioned. One where every day is just another day in a war without end. I've seen through evil. You, Snake. You're just like the boss. Now you're worse. Compared to you, I'm not so bad. But whereas Solid Snake feels guilty over his twisted, sick pleasures, Rejoice, Snake! Ours will be a glorious battle. This isn't glorious, it's just plain killing. Violence isn't a sport. Liquid Snake relishes them. Well, I'm not like you! Unlike you, I'm proud of the destiny that is encoded into my very genes! Yeah. There's a killer inside you. You don't have to deny it. We were created to be that way! Liquid believes that the individual is helpless against the influence of genetic determinism. That there's no point in denying what's in your DNA, so just embrace it. You can't fight your genes, it's fate. All living things are born for the sole purpose of passing on their parents' genes. That's why I'll follow what my genes tell me. You see, Liquid's main reason for hating Solid Snake is that he was led to believe that his brother got all of Big Boss's good genes, while Liquid was left with the shitty genes. You're fine. You got all the old man's dominant genes. I got the flawed recessive genes. Everything was done so that you would be the greatest of his children. The only reason I exist is so they could create you. I was the favorite, huh? That's right. I'm just the leftovers of what they used to make you. Can you understand what it's like to know that you're garbage since the day you were born? So it makes sense that Solid Snake was able to defeat his genetically inferior brother, right? Well, it turns out, Liquid was misinformed. He wasn't the inferior clone, Solid Snake was. Yes. The inferior one was the winner after all. That's right. Until the very end, Liquid thought he was the inferior one. 
Solid Snake was able to prove his evil twin wrong, not through any grand speeches, but by living by example. By being able to defeat his genetically superior brother, Snake's actions spoke louder than words. You mustn't allow yourself to be chained to fate, to be ruled by your genes. Humans can choose the type of life they want to live. And that is why Salad Snake is such an amazing character. The odds are always stacked against him, yet he always comes out on top. He makes the impossible possible. A strong man doesn't need to read the future. He makes his own. But what really changed Snake's life was seeing his best friend back from the dead. Gray Fox. Colonel. That ninja is Grey Fox, no doubt about it. Even though they fought to the death, Salad Snake still thought of Grey Fox as a friend. And you still call yourself friends? Hard to believe. War is no reason to end a friendship. Although Snake had promised that he wouldn't end up like Fox, he ultimately ended up in the same place as the Walking Dead. Ever since he fought with you in Zanzibar, he's been like a ghost. A ghost looking for a place to die. <laughs> I finally understand. I wasn't waiting to kill people. I was waiting for someone to kill me. For most of the game, Snake is just doing what he's told to do, rather than make his own decisions. Following orders blindly, with no questions asked, you've lost your warrior's pride and become nothing more than a palm snake. This parallels the fact that Snake obeys whatever the player tells him to do, no matter how stupid. You idiot! But as Grey Fox attacks Metal Gear Rex, Snake has a clear shot at Rex's cockpit. But no matter how many times the player mashes the fire button, Snake refuses. No good. Can't do it. No in the world. Can't do it. Snake takes a stand, defying the player's control over him, because he can't bear to hurt his friend anymore. And in Fox's last moments, he imparts wisdom on the snake. Snake, we're not tools of the government or anyone else. Fighting was the only thing, the only thing I was good at. But at least I always fought for what I believed in. Snake, farewell. Snake was wowed by Fox's bravery. Naomi, your brother just saved you, me in the whole world. He fought with every ounce of strength in his body. Maybe... Maybe now he's finally found some peace. Inspired by his friend's sacrifice, Solid Snake vows to live his life to the fullest, fighting for what he believes in. Colonel, Fox is dead. I know. God rest his soul. Even a soldier needs more to live for than just fighting. Maybe if he'd found something else, he wouldn't have been so haunted. He was too simple, too pure. There was nothing in this world for him to believe in, so he chose to believe only in himself. I guess you're right. A man like Fox is really only looking for his death. Yeah, but if you ask me, there's no happiness to be gained in death. No peace either. I'm gonna leave here alive. The perception of Solid Snake as a stone-cold, remorseless killer was, funnily enough, shared by Naomi Hunter. But why did you go so far out of your way to save her? For Campbell's sake, or maybe it's because you like her? I don't want to see any woman die right in front of me. Oh really? Since when did anybody's death bother you so much? Naomi, it's true that Snake has killed a lot of people, but that doesn't mean he doesn't have a heart. It's okay, Colonel. She's right. What's wrong, Naomi? Nothing. I'm just surprised you're willing to sacrifice yourself. You got the genes of a soldier, not a savior. You trying to say that I'm only interested in saving my own skin? I wouldn't go that far, but... I don't know what the hell my genes look like, and I don't care. I operate on instinct. Like an animal? 
I'm going to save Meryl. I don't need an excuse. Okay. And I'm not doing it for someone else, either. I'm gonna save Meryl for myself. Colonel, don't worry. Now, for most players, the knee-jerk reaction to Naomi's festering was... Bitch! Bitch! You dirty whore. But, her beef with Snake is actually understandable, once you learn that Grey Fox was her older brother. Yes. Frank Yeager. The man who you destroyed was my brother and my only family. No. Grey Fox? We survived that hell together, Frank and I. You protected me. Naomi hated Snake for what he did to Frank and Big Boss, and wanted to get back at him somehow. You killed my benefactor and sent my brother home a cripple. I vowed revenge and joined Foxhound. What she didn't realize, though, is that Snake hated himself for what he did, just as much as she hated him. Naomi, I don't blame you for wanting me dead, but I can't go yet. I still have a job to do. Gradually, Naomi begins to empathize with Snake, no longer seeing him as a callous murderer. Do you still hate me? Not exactly. I was partly wrong about you. Like Liquid, Naomi thought that she could only find purpose in life through her DNA. I thought that if I analyzed my DNA, I could find out who I was, who my parents were, and I thought that if I knew that, then I'd know what path I should take in life. But I was wrong. I didn't find anything. I didn't learn anything. But through his actions, Salad Snake taught Naomi the value of living for its own sake, to enjoy life and to care for those around you. Living is a link to the future. That's how all life works. Loving each other, teaching each other. That's how we can change the world. I finally realized it. The true meaning of life. Thank you, Snake. It seemed that Naomi forgave Snake for what he did to her brother, and Snake showed sensitivity towards Naomi by not revealing that Frank was the one who killed her parents. I was young then, and couldn't bring myself to kill her too. I felt so bad that I decided to take her with me. I raised her like she was my own blood to soothe my guilty conscience. Even now she thinks of me as her brother. Tell her for me. Tell her that I was the one who did it. I heard about my brother. I'm sorry. But he had one last message he wanted to say to you. He told me to tell you to forget about him, and to go on with your own life. Frankie said that? Yeah. He also said he'll always love you. Really, the best way to summarize Solid Snake's character arc in Metal Gear Solid 1 is these three clips. So, tell me, Snake. What's your name? Your real name. A name means nothing on the battlefield. Poor girl kept calling your name. Meryl. Stupid woman. Falling in love with a man who doesn't even have a name. I have a name. No! We have no past, no future, and even if we did, it wouldn't be truly ours. So, where to, Snake? David. My name's David. Okay. So where to, Dave? Ultimately, Metal Gear Solid 1 is about Solid Snake shedding his nihilistic skin. He forms connections with others and renews his faith in humanity. Until today, I've lived only for myself. Survival has been the only thing I cared about in my life. That's not just you. That's how everyone is. I only felt truly alive when I was staring death in the face. Maybe it's time I live for someone else. Someone else? Yeah. Someone like you. Maybe that's the real way to live. We see this renewed faith carry over into Metal Gear Solid 2, Sons of Liberty.
In his excellent analysis of Sons of Liberty, driving off the map, James Glenn Howell argues that Solid Snake regresses as a character. He claims that Snake resorted to drinking after the Shadow Moses incident, and could only find purpose in life on the battlefield, thus obeying his genetic fate. Now don't get me wrong, James Clinton Howell's work is fantastic, and definitely worth reading. That being said though, I strongly disagree with this take. First of all, Snake's drinking problem likely happened before the Shadow Moses incident, because he was talking about how he used to be apathetic about life. We work on our own, but it's a cause worth fighting for. Why would you stick your neck out for something this risky? That's the way I used to look at it, four years ago. I was holed up in the middle of nowhere in Alaska, drinking too much. Second of all, while it's true that Solid Snake returns to the battlefield in Sons of Liberty, he's not fighting for a war without end like Big Boss and Liquid Snake. We have a responsibility to the coming generations, to the world. What responsibility? To keep track of the mistakes we've made as a species. We need to remember, to spread the word, to fight for change, and that's what keeps me alive. As part of philanthropy, Snake and Otacon join forces to take on the threat of a new Metal Gear arms race. Snake is no longer following orders from the government, now he's fighting for what he believes in. I'm here because I was assigned to this mission, not because I want to. If I could, I'd be out of here in a second. How could you come back to all this? Why keep fighting? There's something my best friend said to me once. What? We're not tools of the government, or anyone else. Fighting was the only thing I was good at, but at least I always fought for what I believed in. Solid Snake's personal growth also carries over. Look at how Snake initially treated Otacon in Metal Gear Solid 1. I'll show you the way. On that leg of yours, you'll just slow me down. And compare that to Sons of Liberty. You've got your job, we've got ours. You mean... I'd only get in your way. Wrong. Only you can save those hostages. Got it? Snake and Otacon couldn't be more different as people, yet they end up being best bros. It's adorable. So, even though Solid Snake's relationship with Meryl didn't work out, his character development from the previous game remains intact. え、表現手法じゃないとできなかった展開なんですよ。あの、勝手に飛び込んでいくっていう。え、そう非常に好きな。Liquid. Thus, Snake manages to break away from the biological determinism that's been dogging him since birth. We already see this idea in the opening credits, when the snake separates from the DNA sequence, a symbol of Snake managing to get free of his genetic origin. Whereas Raiden, who is younger, remains the prisoner of his fate. The original Metal Gear Solid dealt with the idea of how genes influence our lives, and depicts how Solid Snake was able to defy his genetic fate. On the other hand, Sons of Liberty deals with the idea of memes and their influence. We started with genetic engineering, and in the end, we succeeded in digitizing life itself. But there are things not covered by genetic information. What do you mean? Human memories, ideas, culture, history. Genes don't contain any record of human history. We've always kept records of our lives. Through words, pictures, symbols, from tablets to books. But not all the information was inherited by later generations. A small percentage of the whole was selected and processed, then passed on. Not unlike genes, really. That's what history is, Jack. On top of being a guinea pig for the Patriots' social engineering plans, Raiden was memetically conditioned by Solidus Snake into becoming a cold-blooded killer. If I survived the day's fight, I was praised, fed, and had a bed to sleep in. I think I was only six when I held my first AK, but I'm not even sure of that. They... they built us from the ground up into killing machines. 
because of this, Raiden feels that he can never live a normal life, that he's doomed by his mimetic fate. The last two years with you, it's been more than I've ever hoped for. Jack... But I can't go any farther. I know you want to get married. I... But... I can't. I can't risk starting a family. There's no way to erase my childhood. I wonder if Raiden's problems reminded Solid Snake of Frank Yeager and his tragically failed relationship with Gustava Hefner. But just as Solid Snake was able to defy his genetic fate, he helps Raiden work to overcome his mimetic fate. Raiden, we don't carry guns to take people down. We're not here to help some politician either. You can say that because you're a legend, a hero. I'm Jack the Ripper, a dirty reminder of a terrible mistake. People will remember only the good part, the right part of what you did. There's no right part in murder. Not ever. And we're not in this to make a name for ourselves. Then what are you and Otacon fighting for? A future. You can stop being part of a mistake, starting now. You can find your own name. And your own future. Decide for myself? And whatever you choose will be you. Thanks to Solid Snake, Raiden learns to become his own person. Do not let Solidus or the Patriots define who he is. He decides to find his own name, and his own life. Well, not quite. Not yet, anyway. By far the most controversial part of Solid Snake's story is his grand finale, Metal Gear Solid 4, Guns of the Patriots. Many feel that his progression as a character was largely undone, and he's regressed back into being a cynical nihilist. So, what do you think? Is your age of heroes finally over? I'm no hero. Never was. Never will be. I'm just an old killer. Hired to do some wet work. The thing you have to keep in mind is that Solid Snake is, in part, a reflection of Hideo Kojima himself. And finally, the last symbol in the game. In the following scene, Snake, the veteran who teaches everything he knows to Raiden before leaving, is Kojima. Who or what they are. Raiden, the apprentice, is no other than Kojima's team. The memories you have and the role you were assigned are burdens you had to carry. It doesn't matter if they were real or not. That's never the point. Kojima originally intended to lead the series with Sons of Liberty, leaving the game's many mysteries as mysteries. Unfortunately, fans demanded answers to everything under the sun, which led to the creation of Guns of the Patriots. But during the conceptual phase of development, Kojima began to wonder if his message had truly really gotten through, both to fans and his team. Eventually, Kojima realized that the reason he had so much trouble passing down the series is because there's some things you can't pass down, a person's will, thoughts, and emotions aren't encoded into genes, and they're not a part of memes either. This was the origin of the game's theme, sense. Thus, Kojima reflected his personal predicament on the Solid Snake, now dubbed Old Snake. Like Kojima, Old Snake returns to a changed battlefield, a dystopian world where war, gaming as a whole, has lost all meaning and only exists for profit. War and its consumption of life has become a well oiled machine. War has changed. When the battlefield is under total control, war becomes routine. 
After receiving harsh fan backlash in Sons of Liberty, Raiden returns in Guns of the Patriots, totally reinvented as a badass cyborg ninja. <laughs> You too, immortal. No, I just don't fear death. But this was all done at the expense of Raiden's conclusion in Sons of Liberty. After the Big Shell incident, he became unstable. Memories began to resurface from his childhood when he fought for Solidus in the Liberian Civil War. Jack slowly stopped coming home, and when he did, He'd be dead drunk, sometimes covered in cuts and bruises. Raiden became cool at the cost of his humanity and free will. At first, it seems like Kojima sold out his principles, sacrificing Raiden's story and character for the sake of appeasing dude bros who hated him. But if we look at Snake and Raiden in Guns of the Patriots through the same lens as Sons of Liberty, with Snake as Kojima and Raiden as both the player and Kojima's team, a more interesting explanation is revealed. I'll release you. It's the only way I'll ever be free. Raiden, five years ago, that's not what I meant. Raiden's regression as a character in Guns of the Patriots represents how Kojima failed to pass down his message to both players and his team in Sons of Liberty. In fact, much of Guns of the Patriots is a deconstruction of the message of every game up to this point. In the original Metal Gear Solid, Naomi said that we mustn't allow ourselves to be chained to fate, to be ruled by our genes. Yet in Guns of the Patriots, she's diagnosed with cancer, a genetic disorder. I've been a fool. I let myself drown in my nanomachines, and now I'm trapped by them. You said yourself we mustn't allow ourselves to be chained to fate. <laughs> I can't slip free. In Snake Eater, Big Boss's mentor, the Boss, sacrificed her life and reputation to save the world from nuclear war. But much like how Kojima failed to pass down his will, his sense, to both players and his team, the Boss's will was misinterpreted by her disciples, which led to the chaos of the entire Metal Gear saga. There was nothing left of the Boss's noble will in their struggle. All that remained was hatred. A passion to destroy one another. So yes, in Guns of the Patriots, Salad Snake is more cynical than he was in Sons of Liberty. But can you blame him? His own body is crumbling as the whole world descends into a hopeless nightmare, where whatever good he did was seemingly for nothing. We're a sister. Insurance that future generations never prosper. And that's on top of all the trauma Snake carried with him since the MSX games. Naomi hated them for what they did to Frank's body. But it was me that crippled him in the first place. She must have hated me too. But even when Kojima's allegory with Old Snake is acknowledged, there's a key part of the equation that gets overlooked. I'm not like the BMCs. I don't need your money. Kojima was asked if there's any way that sense can be passed down, to which he explains, I think that, even though you might not be able to describe something in words, it's important to show it indirectly. No matter how often a parent tells their child they shouldn't misbehave, or that they should spur it up, the child usually doesn't listen, do they? So I had Snake who continues to fight despite his age, live by example. Instead of offering a direct message, it's like a father going out and working hard every day to provide for his child, rather than simply tell them he loves them. In the game, Meryl and other characters tell Old Snake he doesn't have to fight, that they'll take over for him. But Snake continues to fight. That's what he wants to pass on. Of course, they may not realize it while he's still alive, why don't we get somebody else to go? There's no need for you to do it. I still have things left to do. 
the side smoke. Thus, like Kojima, Solid State continues to fight, to clean up his mess with his memetically revived brother, and fight to pass down his sense, no matter what stands in his way. <laughs> it's not about winning or losing. I... no. We started this. Snake's body is failing him. Worse, he learned that he's going to become a biological weapon in a few months. He has no tomorrow. The only thing keeping him together is a small glimmer of hope for a better future. Your cells, blood, organs, nerves, skeletal system, muscle tissue, every part of your body is aging rapidly. An ordinary man wouldn't even be standing by now. Snake, the only thing keeping you together is the strength of your will. While it made some sense to criticize Snake's more cynical portrayal earlier in the game, it makes less and less sense as the game goes on, culminating with the ultimate show of Snake's indomitable willpower, the Microwave Hall. Snake is literally on his knees, barely able to keep on. Yet during this time, he thinks of his friends, his allies, what's at stake? And that's what gives him the power to keep trudging on, one step at a time. When Snake's body fails him, what keeps him going is raw willpower. There's this perception of Guns of the Patriots, where people accuse the game of sacrificing the franchise's core values, all in the name of shallow fan service. But if you look at the game more closely, you'll see that the game deconstructed those values in order to later reassemble them, stronger than ever. We see this most clearly with Raiden. It was never going to work out for me. It even rained the day I was born. You've got it all wrong. You were the lightning in that rain. You can still shine through the darkness. Throughout the game, as Raiden basks in the comforts of nihilism and despair, Solid Snake doubles down on his message to Raiden. Hell, helping Raiden was so important to Snake that the will to do so spontaneously recovered his psych gauge. Your body may be a machine, but your heart is a human. You've got a life to go back to. She means nothing to me now. Run! Look at me! Do you still have your youth? Don't waste it. You can start over. And ultimately, Solid Snake's faith in Raiden was vindicated when he returned to his family, vowing to never leave them again. I'll never leave you alone again. <laughs> this is why I'm so critical of Metal Gear Rising Revengeance, because it explicitly renders everything that Solid Snake did for Raiden utterly pointless. Someone once told me, you can find your own name, and your own future. After that, I dropped Jack for good. Jack is back. <laughs> I think it's time for Jack to let her rip. Rather than have Raiden struggle with, but ultimately overcome his trauma, like he does in the games Kojima actually directed, Metal Gear Rising depicts Raiden giving in to his worst impulses. Even worse, rather than have Raiden follow Solid Snake's advice of finding his own name and his own life, the game ends with Raiden accepting his new role as Senator Armstrong's successor leaving his family behind to fight his own war. PMCs are in demand once again. Yeah. Fighting for reasons they don't understand. Causes they don't believe in. Big pardon? 
No. Nothing. Thankfully, according to Hideo Kojima, Metal Gear Rising does not reflect his idea for what happens after Guns of the Patriots, and is therefore a parallel story, just like Metal Gear Survive, which everyone agrees is non-canon. I felt the need to address this because, if I didn't, I would probably get a bunch of comments from people telling me about how my analysis doesn't work if you take Metal Gear Rising into account. So I just wanted to make it clear that you're not supposed to take Metal Gear Rising into account when analyzing Hideo Kojima's canonical Metal Gear saga. It's still an awesome game with a killer soundtrack and amazingly fluid gameplay, but it's not meant to be an authentic part of Raiden's storyline. For all intents and purposes, Raiden's canon story ends with Metal Gear Solid 4. Metal Gear... What's that? But anyway, back to my main point. Likewise, even though Cancer hung over Naomi, she made the most of her time remaining, finding glimmers of happiness in her bond with Hal, as scientists haunted by their work. And yet, in the end, you help me feel the joy of living. Thank you, Hal. And she passes down Fox Alive to Sunny, which would go on to wipe away the Patriots' control. Naomi's life became a link to the future. Snake, hear me. Our country is an innocent child once more. A new dawn is rising. Now, she can build a new destiny for herself. Remember that Naomi initially hated Snake, in part for killing her benefactor, Big Boss. You killed my benefactor and sent my brother home a cripple. I vowed revenge. But her opinion of Snake changed so much that she implored the newly revived Big Boss to save Snake from committing suicide, even if it meant exposing himself to the new Fox Die strain. There's one more thing Naomi wanted me to tell you. About the oh, old fox dye in your body. The one that mutated. The new fox dye uh, inside you continues to multiply. At the same time, it is preventing the old mutated fox dye from reproducing. A new fox die is uprooting the old. Naomi confirmed it in her follow-up. Which brings us to the most surprising influence Solid Snake had on others. His own father, Big Boss. Some say that Solid Snake can't be the hero of the Metal Gear saga because he almost always gets manipulated by the Patriots. They did it again. Oh, they used you to kill me. Oh. And while that's true, it's also true for nearly every other character in the series, even Big Boss. They played us like a damn fiddle! The Metal Gear Saga is about people fighting to assert their free will in the face of an oppressive, all-encompassing system designed to squash or control dissent. Know this. Zero and I, Liquid and Solidus, we all fought a long, bloody war for our liberty. We fought to free ourselves from nations, and systems, and norms, and ages. No matter how hard we tried, the only liberty we found was on the inside, trapped within those limits. The boss and I may have 
chosen different paths, but in the end, we were both trapped inside the same cage. Liberty. Take the boss, for example. She followed her orders during Operation Snake Eater because, given the circumstances, it was either that or nuclear war. She didn't betray the United States. No. Far from it. She was a hero who died for her country. The boss's defection was a ruse set up by the U.S. government. Everything she did, she did for her country. She sacrificed her life and her honor for her native land. She was a real hero. She was a true patriot. But despite being loyal to her mission, she'd sowed seeds of dissent against the current world order. I could see the planet as it appeared from space. That's when it finally hit me. Space exploration is nothing but another game in the power struggle between the U.S. and the USSR. Politics, economics, the arms race, they're all just arenas for meaningless competition. In the 21st century, everyone will be able to see that we are all just inhabitants of a little celestial body called Earth. A world without communism or capitalism, that is the world I wanted to see. It was her words, her courage, her sacrifice that inspired Major Zero and Big Boss to supplant the old world order with a new one. The Patriots. But unfortunately, both would lose sight of the boss's true will. They both misinterpreted her will. And their absolute reverence for her drove them apart. Major Zero, commander of the Fox Unit, would seek to unite the world by bending individual wills into malleable subjects under his command. If we are to unite the world, literacy must be suppressed, to suppress the information immune system. On the other hand, Big Boss could only look at the world from a soldier's perspective, and as such, perceived the boss putting down her gun in the name of peace as a betrayal of everything she stood for. In the end, she put down her gun. And when she did, she rejected her entire life up to that point, including me. In giving up her life, she abandoned everything she was as a soldier. Big Boss's fatal flaw is that he could only see the boss as a soldier, not as a woman. She wanted to live on. In your memory. Not as a soldier. But as a woman. The ideological battle between Zero and Big Boss would wreak havoc throughout the entire Metal Gear saga, culminating in a twisted fusion of both the Patriots and Outer Heaven, the war economy. In this new world, there were no ideologies, no principles, no ideals, not even the thing she treasured most, loyalty. There was only the war economy. It was a colossal error in judgment, one zero couldn't possibly have foreseen. Nevertheless, the seed that the boss planted would persist in her friend and possible lover, Dr. Strangelove. You saw it, didn't you? When you went to space, that there's beauty outside of battle. Even as she was forced to build the Patriot's AI system, she was able to sow seeds of dissent deep within the system's code. I buried code. Inside of you, there is an egg. And when someone finds it, when they crack it, the world you envisioned will become a reality. She also used Huey as a sperm donor to pass the boss's will onto a child of their own. If I could pass your will 
unto a child I carried. My genes, your meme, a father would be irrelevant. That child would be ours. It's also implied that she implemented safeguards within the system to protect her child. Hell, don't ever be afraid. Whatever happens out there, she'll be watching over you. The system, the framework for your world, will protect you. While not confirmed, this may have been a factor in the Patriots' decision to send in Solid Snake during the Shadow Moses incident. But in any case, it's clear that Dr. Strangelove's son, Hal Emmerich, is a spiritual child of her and the boss. So during the Shadow Moses incident, the boss's meme would then be passed on from Hal Emmerich, Otacon, the Solid Snake. And together, they work to let the world be from threats to future generations. And through their efforts, as well as the efforts of those whom Solid Snake had influenced, like Naomi Hunter, they were able to crack Strangelove's egg, overthrow the Patriots, while still preserving modern civilization, and at last, fulfill the boss's true will. And thus, Solid Snake unwittingly succeeds where Major Zero and Big Boss failed. He becomes the true heir to the boss's will. One of the overall themes of the Metal Gear series is having, um, you know, the main character uh, basically surpass his predecessors, surpass, surpass the people who came before him and, you know, really usher in a new generation. So in that sense, uh, Metal Gear Solid 3 is really a key chapter in the series and Big Boss is a very key character because he's basically like, you know, Snake's father. So that's where I really want to put a lot of detail into that character. It was through Solid Snake, his son, that Big Boss was able to understand the boss's will. Boss, you were right. Oh, it's not about changing the world. It's about doing our best to leave the world the way it is. It's about respecting the will of others and believing in your own. At last, I understand the meaning behind what you did. At last, I understand the truth behind your courage. In the end, Big Boss conceded that Solid Snake was the better man. Mm. Oh, I never thought of you as a son. But I've always respected you as a soldier and as a man. place back then. Maybe you wouldn't have made the same mistakes that I did. Big Boss, the man who condemns Solid Snake to die like a dog on the battlefield, now implores his son to live the rest of his life in peace. Let it go, my son. I'm not here to fight. What? It's over. Time for you to put aside the gun and live. Don't. Don't waste the life you have left fighting. If Big Boss's story is about how a natural human being becomes a monster, Solid Snake's story is about how a man-made monster reclaims his humanity. Once the source of evil returns to zero, a new one, a new future, will be born. That new world 
is yours to live in, not as a snake, but as a man. You are nobody's tool now, no one's toy. You are no longer a prisoner of fate. Your body and your soul are your own. In the documentary Hideo Kojima's Gene, Kojima explained the visual concept for Guns of the Patriots marketing campaign. Dissolve. When a flower dies, it scatters its seeds. Snake's DNA, his seed of life, dissolves into the wind and gives rise to new life in a new place. Salad Snake is sterile. His ability to reproduce was artificially engineered out, and his lifespan was deliberately shortened with accelerated aging. Snake was never meant to be anything more than a disposable tool of war. Snake had a hard life. He needs some time to rest. Much like how the original Metal Gear was only meant to be a derivative combat game, just another game in a war without end. Snake, in the natural world, there's no such thing as boundless slaughter. There's always an end to it. You are different. What are you trying to say? The path you walk on has no end. Each step you take is paved with the corpses of your enemies. Their souls will haunt you forever. You shall have no peace. But to quote the man himself, life isn't just about passing on your genes. Through his actions, just by being authentic to himself, Solid Snake was able to leave his mark on others. Otacon, an anime nerd with no combat skills, was able to find strength through his friend's indomitable will. Snake, you're right. I haven't lost everything yet. I've still got a job to do. That's right. We need you. I'm done crying. I don't have any more tears to shed. Naomi, who initially hated Snake, later thanked him for helping her learn the true meaning of life. Raiden felt that he was too far gone to start a family, that no matter what he did, he would always be Jack the Ripper. But Snake taught Raiden that he doesn't have to be a prisoner to fate, that he can start over and choose his own legacy. Metal What? And ultimately, even his father, Big Boss, was able to find peace and forgiveness through his son. And likewise, Hideo Kojima, Konami's gaming rookie, would use this humble little MSX game as a jumping off point to elevate the entire gaming medium. Well, this is something I often say, but I believe that creating something new is all about making the impossible possible. So I think, you know, all these, many of the things that we come to think of as being impossible, they're not really impossible. I think about 90% of them actually can become possible. The only reason people say it's impossible is because no one's ever done it before. But if you're a very creative individual, you can find ways to make it happen. Solid Snake was one of gaming's original heroes, starting out on the 8-bit MSX system with no personal qualities of his own, other than that he likes cigarettes. His development as a character mirrors that of the medium itself, where each new generation adds a new layer of depth. Voice acting, facial expressions, even wrinkles. But whereas Mario and Link will live on forever simply by appearing in more games, Solid Snake was able to escape the cycle of endless gaming sequels, and at last, find peace from a war without end. Snake, wait up! You forgot these. No thanks. I'm quitting. Snake! These things will kill you. Where will you go? Our fight is finished. 
There's nothing left for us to do. No. There's one thing I still have to do. I have to see this age off. See what the future brings. Sounds good to me. I'll go with you. Huh. Otacron. I'm gonna be dead soon. Exactly. That's why you need me. As a witness. A witness? Yeah. Someone on the outside to bear witness to your final days. Someone to pass on your story. Not that I'm the only witness. But I'll remember everything you were. And stick with you to the end. Solid Snake is dead. He will never be the protagonist of an authentic Metal Gear game ever again. But as long as he lives on in our hearts, so long as his digital life inspires us to press on no matter what, to make the impossible possible, his legend will never die. Thank you so much for watching all the way through. This video took a lot of time and effort, so I hope you enjoyed it. I've been wanting to make a solid stake analysis video for a little over a decade. So the fact that I finally made the video and you're watching it right now, it feels so surreal. As you can probably tell from my voice, I'm on the autism spectrum, so I always strongly identified with Solid Snake's more introverted personality. Solid Snake's story taught me that, even if things look bleak, you should never give up hope. And while I can't honestly say that I've always been true to that message, it's a story I still come back to when I need it. By the way, if you enjoyed this video, I highly recommend reading Project Ito's novelization of Metal Gear Solid 4. Ito's prose is almost one big analysis of the entire saga. In fact, Kojima recommended that newcomers read Ito's novelization to better understand the saga, which is why I cited it at several points in the video. Unfortunately, the book looks to be out of stock at Amazon, but you can still get the ebook. I plan on making more Metal Gear videos in the future, but they're not going to be as long as this. So please remember to like and subscribe. Have a nice day!